So you want to learn how to speedrun Red Ball 4 Volume 1. This video will serve as a comprehensive guide about how to start speedrunning the game and getting your first runs done. Starting out, you're going to want to download the game. Uh, this is covered in a lot more depth in the Red Ball beginner tutorial, so check that out first if uh, you get a, a bit lost. Uh, there is a Google Drive link in the description that you're going to want to open, download, and then unzip. Uh, once you get here, you're going to want to right-click on one of these Definitive Edition files, hit Properties, hit Change, uh, hit More Apps, hit Look for another app on this PC, and navigate to this Flash Player file right here and select it. Now whenever you click on these SWF files, it should open with this Flash Player. If that's a bit complicated, you can just drag this file over the Flash Player to open it. Also, you're going to want to download LiveSplit, which is also linked in the description. You're going to want to download that, unzip it, find the LiveSplit.exe, and open it. It should look like this, but without any background image. You're then going to want to right-click, edit splits, uh, type in Red Ball 4 uh, Volume 1 for the game name. You're going to want, this will say um, activate right here, so you're going to want to hit the activate button. On segment name, you're going to want to type in 1, 2, uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, oops, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Um, your splits will look a bit more basic than this, but that's the general idea of what you need to do. Next, you're going to want to open the game. You're going to have to wait for this splash screen. And then you're going to want to hit options and disable the music. The reason you're going to want to do this is because the music can get picked up by YouTube's copyright system, and uh, that's just not something you want to happen. So once you do that, go ahead and hit back. You're going to right click on the game, quality, medium. You're going to hit control F to full screen the game. You're going to right click show all. Um, and then uh, you're good to go. Now, if you notice the game lagging a lot, you can try right clicking quality to low, or you can try making the game smaller. Uh, but generally, this is going to be a pretty good setup. So I'm going to go ahead and drag my splits over here. Uh, another thing I'd like to mention is that if you keep your quality on high, if you roll over the uh, first platform in three, like I'll demonstrate, it just won't be there. And you don't really want that to happen. It's also going to create unnecessary lag and increase to your loading times. So make sure you're playing on medium or below. Once you've done that, we're ready to get started. Now, uh, uh, another couple things I'd like to mention is that uh, double jumping is a glitch that's used all over this run, and I've already made a tutorial about how to do that glitch, uh, which I've also linked in the description, which is timestamped to Red Ball 4 Volume 1. So go ahead and watch that first before you, um, come back here. So now we're going to click on level 1, hit the skip button, and we're going to get started. Now, uh, I'd like to go over double jumping a little more in detail, um, so... There are two different timings for double jumping that I'm displaying right here. So this one is uh, closer timing, and this one's a more spaced out timing. You definitely want to get the closer timing uh, more of the time, but getting the more spaced out timing isn't bad either. Now, you only need to hit the spacebar twice in order to double jump, but uh, it, it might be best to actually hit the spacebar three times, as if your first input gets dropped, or your second input doesn't end up uh, resulting in a double jump, uh, it'll become more of a safety net, uh, having three or more jumps. But just make sure you're not mashing the space bar with no rhythm or timing. Uh, so I would just go here in level one and just practice your double jumping until you can get it to be a consistency that you're happy with. Uh, another thing I'd like to mention about double jumping is a lot of this is dependent on uh, the quality of your keyboard. A good quality mechanical keyboard uh, is going to give you a much easier time with these double jumps as it's going to be more precise and uh, the keys are just going to be more responsive. 
If you have a membrane keyboard, it's going to be a little bit harder, especially if it's a, an extremely cheap one. If you do have a membrane keyboard and you can still double jump, that's great. Just, just know that having a mechanical keyboard will probably help with your consistency. Uh, I personally have a mechanical keyboard, and it has definitely helped uh, when playing the game. Uh, but once you get your consistency to something that you're happy with, we can go ahead and start playing. So in level 1, you're going to want to execute your first double jump on this rock right here. You're going to want to jump around here, and then DJ on the second rock. Um, you definitely, If you don't get either of these double jumps, you're going to want to reset, as losing speed here is going to affect your gameplay in levels 2 and 3, costing you a bunch of time. So, let's go ahead and get this and go into level 2. Now, going into level 2, you might lose speed from time to time. Uh, this is caused by playing the level a little bit differently than how I demonstrated, or just having bad luck. So, uh, if that happens, you're probably going to want to reset and go to level 1. So, go ahead and do that. Single jump, double jump, and then go to level 2. Double jump around here. Double jump at the star. Hold jump. And you should be good. Level 3, jump around here. Uh, keep holding jump. If you get lucky, you'll get this strategy, which is a really great outcome. And then you can just double jump here to corner bounce off of that. Yada, yada, yada. However, most of the time, that's not going to happen. So, you can either get a boulder skip where you jump here and then jump off of the boulder... And uh, if that misses or you just jump over the boulder, you can just double jump to get over this wall. So once you've done that, you're going to want to DJ on this patch of grass right here. If possible, uh, it's not necessary, but it'll help you get more speed. And then you would want to DJ off this plank of wood. Uh, and then you either want to DJ off this piece of wood right here. If you have enough speed, you can DJ here and then just kind of hit the corner and keep going. Or if you have, like, no speed, you can DJ here and not bonk at all. Jump around the flag. Try to DJ on the bridge. Uh, if, you, if that doesn't work, you can just do single jumps. Uh, jump around there on the crate and then do a double jump. Uh, obviously, the enemy won't be in that position. Uh, that enemy's position is something you're, you're going to need to keep track of kind of in your head because you don't want to end up hitting it. But normally, it's not that big of an issue. Level 5, you want to jump when you hit the slope. Hold jump, kind of jump over this boulder. And hopefully, you'll get that outcome. You would then want to double jump here. Jump off of the thing. And then go into level 6. However, uh, if you do not end up getting that outcome, uh, say you the enemy's around there, you can try to double jump there to get past the enemy and then do two single jumps to get... Um, past this pit um but you know another outcome is just going over this boulder and the enemy is just not quite in the right position for you to clear it you end up hitting it and then you have to wait to dj uh the most safe way of doing things uh if things get dicey is you can just kill the enemy like a so roll back dj and then do your single jumps to get across the gap now going into level 6, you want to jump over that plank of wood, DJ, wait, do a single jump, jump at the checkpoint, double jump off this plank of wood, reset the flag, and jump at the cart. Uh, now hold right, left right, DJ there. So you, you want to start holding left once you, the cart kind of passes that plank of wood. So you can see left, right, DJ. Um... You want to start holding right pretty much the second you hit the back of the cart. And you're going to want to try to DJ with a lot of speed. So there, I had a lot of speed, but I didn't end up maintaining it. But if you don't maintain speed, it's fine. Just land here, do a single jump off the plank of wood, don't wait as long as I did. DJ at the star. DJ the second you land. DJ again. Jump. And just keep holding jump. Next, you're going to want to DJ kind of when you hit uh, this third star right here in level 8. Uh, do a single jump around the middle of the bush. DJ around the star. Um, this platform is a bit, bit jank because it's not flat, so you kind of want to DJ the second you land if possible. Try to DJ at that flag. If you end up missing it, you can just kind of land here and DJ across this gap or do two single jumps. Uh, but anyways, do 
preferably you want to be able to uh, DJ to here and then DJ again. And then jump over this crate and try DJing from around the back half of the windmill to climb over this wall. Uh, it's like, like that. Uh, if you do end up not barely clearing it, you can kind of jump uh, while you're fuddling around in the air. But uh, hopefully you'll be able to roll up. If you're not comfortable doing that or you end up missing it, you can just DJ, get on the windmill, and then go to level 9. Hold right, hold jump, DJ off this plank, wait, do a single jump, DJ at the flag, jump off this crate, and then you're going to want to reset at this flag. Uh, this will make it so you can maintain speed into 10 pretty much every time as long as you pay attention to what I'm about to do here. So as you can see, you can jump on this in a way that tilts this plank of wood. If this wood tilts at all, you're pretty much never going to maintain speed. You want to jump a little bit earlier so that that plank never moves. If you do that, you should maintain speed into 10. Once you get into 10, you're going to want to DJ right away. As you can see, I messed it up a bit uh, by clipping the cart, and I didn't end up crossing the gap. Uh, this is a pretty difficult strat, and it's completely fine if you either don't maintain speed or you don't end up going for it, or you end up missing it. It's completely fine. You can also do two single jumps to get across those boxes if you're not comfortable with the DJ. So that's an example of crossing the gap. Hold jump, DJ, hold jump. Reset the flag, do a DJ here, jump, jump, and jump. Now, that's what you do if you do end up maintaining speed. If you don't end up maintaining speed, push the cart, roll back, jump, get on the cart, jump in the cart, push this box, jump once it falls over, use it as a ramp to get on the gear, reset the flag, DJ, left, jump, over. Uh, don't go that fast. You want to tilt this a little bit more, like so. And go into 11. In 11, you're going to, going to want to DJ around the bottom of that thing. Hold jump. Do another jump. Just kind of wait here or hit that enemy. Do a DJ here. Uh, tap left. And do a single jump. Just like that. Um, so I'll demonstrate that again. DJ. Hold jump. Jump. Do a jump here. Kind of wait slash hit the enemy. DJ off the plank. Hold right. Tap left. And jump. So that's the safe way of doing 11. Uh, you can try going for the strategy where you, you know, DJ right here and then DJ around there, but it's pretty dicey and doesn't really save that much time. So I just recommend doing uh, this single jump strat right here where you hit the enemy slash wait. Don't hit him too early or he's just going to roll back towards you. So that's another thing to be wary of. Another thing you can do to save a little bit of time is to DJ right here and then kind of land right here and then do the single jump. That'll save you a smidge of time. And then there's, of course, the uh, the really fast way of doing 11 where you kind of DJ off of this box, uh, kind of like so. And it looks like I might get it. And then you do two single jumps like a so. Uh, that's the best way of doing 11, but don't worry about getting that as it's really difficult. Um, there's also a, a modified version of that where you actually DJ over the entire gap, which is even harder and saves a smidge more time. But, uh, once we get to the end of 11, DJ right when you hit that plank of wood, hold jump, hit the top of the boulder, roll down the hill, DJ right there, DJ just past the flag, keep holding jump. Uh, it looks like I did not end up crossing that gap, um, so maybe should have DJed a little bit later. So let's try it again. DJ, DJ around here, hold jump, land right here, and then hold jump through the transition. So how that works is you basically jump right before the transition, you hit the transition, and then by continuing to hold jump, you jump on the transition, which basically makes a pseudo double jump, uh, which should put you over that uh, ridge in 13. If that ends up not working, you just reset and do a double jump to get up here. Now in 12, you may also not get the strategy um, where you maintain a bunch of speed because of enemy position or whatever. You can just DJ, reset the flag, DJ again, jump off the plank of wood, jump here, and hold jump. Uh, that's an example of the screen DJ not working. Um, 
But in 12, you do need to hit this boulder forward, because if you completely avoid it, it's going to count as a puzzle fail, and you're going to have to reset. So you do need to hit the top of the boulder. Don't jump too early or too late. Uh, if you jump kind of like that, where I had to readjust myself, it's a little bit slower, and it also makes it much more difficult. So you want to get it where you kind of don't hit the right side of the boulder is ideal. Um, but you can definitely recover it if that does end up happening. So, yeah, see, even something that bad can be kind of recovered. So, I'll try to get an example where you don't hit the right side of the boulder at all, which is what you're looking for. There we go. DJ. Uh, it looks like my DJs didn't go through, and that would be an example of where you would have to reset the flag. close enough dj back here hold land hold jump okay now you're gonna buffer jump dj right when you land hold forward uh i waited a little bit too long to do this single jump you want a single jump kind of when you're in the air because the game gives you a lot of grace after you fall off a platform to still be able to jump if you jump too early you're not going to be able to cross the gap uh it's just that i'm surprised that worked <laughs> But it's just, yeah, there, that's an example of what you don't want to do. You want to wait till you're in the air so you can cross the gap. Then jump off this enemy. And um, you're going to maintain that speed into 14. Hold forward, left, right. Jump on the crate. Jump off this right side. Keep holding right. Jump off the edge of this plank. Do a DJ right here. Do a single jump right here. Hit this back enemy. And go into the boss. Now, going into the boss, uh, we're going to have to explain a strategy called the boss roll uh, that is really difficult, and you're not going to be able to get it that consistently, so you're going to need to know how to back it up as well. But starting, we're just going to want to buffer a held jump into the boss right here. Wait for this eye to hit uh, 12 o'clock, or just wait until he becomes vulnerable, whichever is more comfortable for you. But I look at the left eye and see the third time it hits 12 o'clock. One, two, three. Then I hold right, I roll against this wall, keep holding right, wait for him to hit me, hold left, and then that should happen after you hold left, if you get lucky. Now, you know, that that is kind of the start of the boss roll, and then you kind of have to maintain uh, that roll um, to the entire other side of the screen to save the maximum amount of time from the strategy. So waiting, left, so I'm hitting him every time he gets at roughly a 45 degree angle or a little bit past it. That's how to make it work. So it's very rhythm based, very timing based, and also very difficult. So hold right, keep holding against the wall, keep holding left. So that would be an example of kind of getting unlucky. I don't think that was possible to recover. How the initial roll works out is very, uh, basically determines if it's going to be possible or not. So this one's fine. Hit him. Oh, wow. Okay, so I, I, it looks like I didn't hit him with enough force on the first roll. So how forcefully you hit the boss is also really important. But I would recommend just letting, looking at my in, input display here. Left. That was really good. Hit him. Hit him. Right past that 45. Right past that 45. Right past that 45. And then it'll become vulnerable again. Hit him. Wait for him to become vulnerable again. Or right for him to become aggro again, actually. Hit him. And then uh, I'll show what you do at the very end. So 12 o'clock. Hold right. Keep holding against the wall. Wait for him to hit you. Hold left. Uh, that would be an example of something that would be impossible to recover. And that's just part of the luck with this. Um, unfortunately, that's kind of the dealio with the boss roll. But I'll show you how to recover it here in just a second after one more successful attempt. Hit. 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 And damage. Damage, and then you're going to want to hold right to the very edge of the wall, and then just rest here. And it'll finish itself. And now I'm just going to purposefully mess it up. 
I'm like, oh no, it didn't work. So what you can do instead is what's called the boss push. So wherever your roll fails, you just wanna do this where you just keep pushing them to the other side of the screen. Just use this motion, this amount of force, this amount of distance. Just keep pushing them like this. And eventually, you can hit him again. Wait for him to be red, hit him, hit him again. Go to the right side of the screen and just wait for him. There you go. All right, so let's do uh, a boss roll one more time. And I think we'll call it there. So, hit him again, right side of the screen. Hold left, hit him, hit him, hit him. Ooh, this is really, ooh. That's an example of a really good recovery right there. That barely worked. So I ended up hitting him too late and had to dig myself out of that hole. And there you go. So for this game, I'm actually going to be doing a full run here uh, just to, and just talk through everything that I'm doing and my thought processes to close off this video. So hopefully you're able to learn some things and hopefully you uh, learn a couple more things while I do this uh, one final attempt to close off this beginner tutorial. So here we go. So the auto splitter should automatically start. I'm going to double jump on this rock and a single jump right here. Double jump on this rock. Go into level two. Double jump on this ridge. Double jump on this star. Hold jump. Go into level three. Jump right here. Hold jump. Double jump on the green. Jump off the plank. Jump here because I don't have much speed. Jump a little after the checkpoint flag. DJ off the bridge. Jump on the top of this box. And there we go. Jump on the ramp. Jump over the boulder. Jump across the gap. Jump right here. Single jump. And into level six. I can just roll up this. Double jump up here. Single jump. Uh, double jump off this wood platform. Reset the flag and jump at the cart. Hold forward. Left, right. Double jump. Single jump to the wood platform. Jump off the wood platform. DJ at the star. DJ on the wood platform. You can just do a single jump right here. Jump here. Keep holding jump. Roll down here. DJ at the star. Single jump in the middle of the bush. DJ right when you land. DJ at the flag if you end up missing it. Just do this to recover it. Single jump over this box. DJ over the wall. Hold right. Buffer jump. DJ off the plank. Single jump at the end of the wood platform. Uh, if you end up missing that double jump, you can do this to recover it. Reset the checkpoint. Jump at the star. Jump on the plank. DJ across the gap. Single jump here, double jump, jump, reset the flag, double jump up here. Level 11, DJ on the ridge, buffer jump, another single jump, wait, hit the enemy, double jump, hold forward, go down here, single jump, next level. DJ, buffer jump. Hit the top of the boulder to put to move it. DJ off the ridge. DJ past the checkpoint. Hold jump. Land here. Do a screen DJ. Buffer jump. DJ right when you land. Do a single jump. Single jump. Push this cart. Go back. Go forward. Jump off the cart. Jump off the plank. DJ up here. Single jump. Hit the enemy, into the boss. Uh, it looks like I somehow accidentally hit my split button somewhere, so you guys can let me know where that happened. Hitting him just past 45 degrees, damaged him. Hold to the right side of the screen. And there it is, 317. So don't expect to get a 317, um, you know, on your first run, but that's an example of an ideal run that you can get with the things that were talked about in this video. I, I just recommend just trying to get your first runs done. 
recording them with uh, recording software like OBS, uh, using the auto splitter to accurately time your run, and then submitting it to speedrun.com. Uh, the process of doing that involves uh, recording your run with OBS, um, and then uh, uploading the video to YouTube, and then doing a speedrun.com submission with that as the YouTube link. I'll link the speedrun.com uh, leaderboard in the description of the video. Uh, and if I do end up making a dedicated tutorial on recording runs and submitting them, I'll also link that. Uh, but that's going to do it for uh, this whole tutorial. I hope you enjoyed watching, and I uh, hope you enjoy speedrunning the game.